Luke chapter 24. We gone from religion to Christianity. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared. We read that last chapter. And certain others with them. So not only those that, that made the spices, but others came along. Now remember, they are expecting a dead body. And they haven't even given thought who's going to roll that stone away. Their heart is to do the Lord's service upon his burial. They haven't thought things out, but here they come. They entered in and found not, they entered in. What do you mean they entered in? Where's the stone? Let's skip two. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre and they entered in. That thing was signed, sealed, and guarded. Chapter 23. And found not the body of the Lord Jesus. So these women come. And they enter into the sepulchre and find nothing. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men, get that, stood by them in shining garments. Now you take all four of these Gospels together. And what you see here with these two men, you see a representation of the mercy seat. But unlike the mercy seat, these are not cherubim. These are angels. Angels don't have wings. But here they are. And as they were afraid. Remember Zacchaeus, John the Baptist's father. Here's an angel. He's afraid. As they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? Now, why would these angels give these women this me particular message? Because Jesus had told them that he's going to rise on the third day. Which, which you, were, you got to imply is when Jesus told the disciples, I'm going to be battered, I'm going to be beaten, I'm going to be abused, but I shall rise the third day. These women were also there. These women followed Jesus around and fed him and took care of him. They heard the word just as much as the disciples. And the message is, why are you here looking for a dead body? That's religion. Religion is looking for a dead body. Christianity is the empty tomb. He is not here. All right, let's take the whole part. He is not here, but is risen. You can go to a tomb of a religious person today or a government figure and you can move their body and you can say, he's not here. We moved it somewhere else. But the body of Jesus that died, God, he is not here. Where is he? He is risen. There's Christianity right there. Now. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Now watch this. And was buried. Here we are, right? And arose from the grave th third day according to the scriptures. Ready? Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. So he told those women what was going to happen. And they didn't even believe. But the resurrected was prophesied. According to the scriptures. The scriptures are what? Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ spoke, what was that? That's scripture. How's that? And Paul backs that up to the Corinthians. Saying, okay, this is what Jesus told them. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinners, sinful men. True. And be crucified. True. True. 
And the third day, risen again. True. That's what he told him. We read that over and over. That is scripture. And they remembered his words. And there's still no reaction. And returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. So they go <coughs> to the disciples and tell them and they tell others. What do they tell him? What is the first evangelistic meaning from the tomb of Jesus Christ? He's not here. He's risen. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna, the Mary, the mother of James, and the other women that were with him, which told these things unto the apostles. That mother of James, Mary, that's Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary Magdalene, she followed Jesus around. The Bible records that she had devils in her. And watch this. Their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. It is the gospel, according to Paul, and there was unbelief. And the angel spoke, this is what Jesus said. And the disciples did not believe it. How's that for a remarkable study? You want to build your church on Peter? He didn't believe what Jesus said. He didn't believe in the resurrection. That's a great guy to have you build your church on. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulcher. I guess he didn't believe it. And stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves. And departed and wondering himself at that which was come to pass. What's he saying? What happened here? You had the testimony of one, two, three, and other women. What happened? And yet Peter does not believe. And Peter ran to the sepulchre and still did not believe. I believe the Gospel of John says that when Jesus met them in the upper room, man, he chided them. He rebuked them for their unbelief. And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus. Emmaus. Emmaus, how do you ever want to say it? Which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. The death the burial, and the resurrection they're talking about and how he was treated before Pilate and all that. They're talking about the gospel. I don't think they're talking about what was going on at the games at the Colosseum. I don't think they were talking about the Olympics, if the Olympics were around this time. I don't know if they were or not. I don't care. They are talking about the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, I think, yet reasoned. I don't like when they do that with my Bible. Move the word over. Next page. Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Uh-oh. Jesus is now coming. <clears throat> but their eyes were hidden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, this is not going to happen again. Jesus is not going to walk up to you and say hi. Jesus is not going to appear in a tree trunk. He's not going to be in your toast. He's not going to be in your cereal. These are all signs for the Jews, and Mark says, to confirm the word. These men are early witnesses of what just happened to Jesus we are recorded. They're talking about the events that are happening. In order to sign, seal, deliver what, what Luke is telling us, it's got to be sealed to the Jews that this was Jesus. In a sign for Corinthians, Jews require a sign.
So, two men. I think. Was this, did this one say two men? Yeah. Two men. All right. It just says two of them. Doesn't mean man or woman. Jesus. Let's start the count now. Jesus, I'm going to give you. He's going to reveal himself to these feet to these two men before the night's out. Let's start counting how many people have now witnessed the resurrected Christ. John's going to tell us he, he showed up to Mary and told Mary, it's me, don't touch me. Two people have now seen the resurrected Jesus Christ. And he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that ye have one to another? As ye he, as he walk and are sad, depression is set in. They're not happy what happened to Jesus, they're sad. You knew if Jesus is God and God is, you knew what Jesus knew. He knew what they were talking about. But what's he want from Adam? Will you confess what you're doing? God and Jesus wants you to tell him what you're doing, what you're saying, what you're thinking. And then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, Cleop, however you want to say that, Answer he said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass in these days? He had no idea who he's talking to. And he said unto them, What things? <laughs> you love how Jesus plays, plays right along. Tell me. This would not be the great opportunity to tell this man they're talking to any lies would it would this be the best time to lie to this man i don't think so i'm glad they told the truth and they said unto him concerning jesus of nazareth which was a prophet mighty indeed all the works he's done and word before god and all the people how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be commended to death and have crucified him death there's the death of jesus being spoken about to jesus this is what the angels spoke to, to the women this is twice the gospel shown up after jesus resurrection this is very important but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel, the Messiah. We trusted is past tense. That's trouble. To redeem Israel, the conquering king of Israel. To kill the Romans and give the land back to Israel. In John, we're going to read in one chapter that he, he stepped aside because they were going to make him king because he fed him and took care of him. He's not come to be a king right now. He's come to be savior. Which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. So this is Sunday. This is the third day. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. Talk early at the sepulcher that day, that morning. When they had found not his body, they came saying that they had seen a vision of angels. Remember this, the Bible, Luke said they saw men. They saw angels. They saw men. They saw angels. They saw men. They saw angels. Angels are never females. Which said that he was alive. Death, burial, resurrection again. This death, burial, and resurrection is being spoken to, by two men to the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they have seen it seen the visions of angels which said that he was alive 
And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher, Peter, and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. He went in there, there was no body. And he said unto them, O fools, he's rebuking them. Slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. What did it, what three things did they just speak about? Death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus Christ has said, that's all in the scriptures, my friends. When I died, when I was buried, when I was in when I rose again from the third day, the scripture. So what does Paul say when he speaks to the Christian? When he speaks about the gospel, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Notice the according to the scriptures keeps showing up. The angel said, Jesus said, Jesus said, according to the prophets. We are in the realm of Christianity, not rich, not uh, religion, because it's what the scripture says. You can't find scriptural markings for religions and their belief. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Suffer. Isaiah 53. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. He has a Bible study. <coughs> the entire Old Testament he brings before these guys while walking down the street. And tells them everywhere in the scriptures, the scripture, what he had done and what he had fulfilled to do. That would have been a remarkable Bible study. And guess what? He didn't carry a Bible. He don't have a completed Bible. He can't say, okay, open your Bibles, Luke 24, here we are, look at us. See, 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 see us? not written yet and they drew nigh unto the village whether they went and he made as though he would have gone further remember we walked out the sea he was going past the boat all right they turned into the village he's going straight but they constrained him saying bide with us jesus is not going to walk with you if you don't invite him to walk don't think that, oh, here you are on this planet Earth and Jesus is going to instantly just come up and start walking with you or continue to walk with you. You're going to come to the point in your life that Jesus, you're going to go one way and Jesus is going to start continuing where he was going and he's not going to walk with you unless say, Lord, come with me. Now, yeah, he stepped up to these two men and began walking with them. But there came a point that he was going to keep on going. And had they not constrained him to stay, he would have gone on. The two blind men in Jericho, they call out Jesus. He stops. Go back to all the miracles. They called Jesus. They stopped Jesus. Jesus, they made their attention to Jesus. He's in a building one day and they, they let down a, a guy upon his bed. They, you've got to get Jesus' attention by calling out to him. You can't say, okay, I'm just saved because who I am without ever calling upon Jesus. They constrain him. For it was toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it. Uh -oh. We're going to have the Lord's Supper. And break and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. That must have been interesting. Excuse me, sir, can you pass? Oh, Jesus! Where'd he go?
And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us? Didn't we get spiritual heartburn? We had no idea who we were talking to. So don't think you're just going to have the oozy kind of Jesus feeling. While he talked with us, by the way, and while he opened to us the scripture. See, they didn't have a pizza heartburn experience. They had experience with the scripture. Again. No, it's scripture, scripture, scripture. What you're believing for your soul better be scriptural. We're building an ark. Chapter and verse, please. The Bible says, Go eat all the world and preach that gospel. That ark ain't moving anywhere. Well, people are coming. Mm hmm. And how much are you charging them? They rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem. It was nighttime, remember? This news has got them up and they're on the run. And found the eleven gathered together and, th and them that were with them. It's late. Come on. Let's have a meal. G oh, no, they didn't know it was Jesus. Sir, let's have a meal. It's late. We'll get a meal. We'll go to bed. Oh, it's Jesus. We've got to go run. I don't care what time it is. We've got to go tell the disciples what we just seen and what we just heard. Now, let me ask you a question. According to Paul, watch this. The women planted a seed. These two women, I mean, the women planted a seed. These two men are going to water that seed in the disciples. Who gives the increase for them to finally believe? The Lord. The Lord. When he walked in there, rebuked them. There he is. There's the salvation plan laid out by Paul in Corinthians. It took three for them to really believe and get trusting in it. It took someone to plant it. It's taken someone to water it. And Jesus walked in and said, Hi. Saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And this is Simon. I don't think this is Peter, Simon. I think this is one of the men. And they told what things were done in the way. Well, we just read how he was known of them in breaking of bread. Now that should enlighten the disciples right there. Because what was the last thing he did with them? Okay. He broke bread. And told them, I'm going to die. I'm going to suffer. But in three days, I'm coming up. And as they spank, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and says unto them, Peace be unto you. you might, they're just talking all of a sudden, boom. Peace be unto you. Who said that? <gasps> Are they believing yet? But they were terrified and frightened. Suppose they had seen a spirit. Ooh. It's a ghost. Are they thinking it's the ghost of Jesus? Or just a ghost? But there's a ghost in the room now. And he said to them, Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? That moment they're having about this spirit is not about Jesus Christ. Behold my hands and my feet. That is that it is my I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit has not flesh and bones. As you see me, I'm not Casper the Ghost, boys. I'm real. Pinch me. Where do you think that came from?
So these 11 men that lived three and a half years with Jesus didn't even recognize his body after he was dead and arose from the grave. You think if you lived three, three and a half years with somebody, you would recognize them? The only thing that really changed was there's no blood in him. And now he's got the he's got the wound. Notice he's got the wounds in his hands and side and his feet. He's in his glorified body, and yet he's still scarred because of our sins. And we, as born again Bible believing Christians, will never bear scars. We get a new body, but yet Christ is still marred by sin. How much are we going to remember in heaven? I have no idea. But do you think we're going to look at those hands of Jesus in eternity and think that that was not for us? All tears will be wiped away. All sin will be put into hell. And yet still in his hands, in his feet, in his side, there are marks. You're not going to be in eternity and look at Jesus and say, oh, well, what were those were for? Because that was God's blood, Acts 20, 28, that flowed for your sins. He still bears the mark. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet, the resurrected body. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said to them, Have ye here any meat? They're still kind of. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of a honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. The resurrected body can eat. I don't think he'll have to go to the bathroom, I hope. And he said unto him, These are the words which I spank unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. He was buried. He arose again the third day according to the scripture. Your salvation rests on what the scriptures say. You better have the right scriptures. You better not have a Bible that's been tampered by man. You better not have another word of another God. Your soul relies on what Jesus has said. Everything that he did according to the scriptures. Remember Moses and Elijah showing up to him? All right. Have I fulfilled everything at this point? Yes, you have, Lord. All right, let's start going to Jerusalem. And to final tap it all off, the death, the suffering, the burial, and the resurrection fulfilled all the first Advent prophecies set by Moses, the first five books of the Bible. The Bible is divided among the prophets, the minor, and, the, and the, they call them the major and the minor prophets, but the prophets. And the Psalms, that would be all the poetry books. Job is among them, Proverbs. Song of Solomon, those are part of the poetry books. The Old Testament, according to Jesus, is divided among the prophets, the, the book of Moses, and the psalm. There's no room for the Apocrypha. You see the Apocrypha in there? That's a bunch of garbage. Don't you get a Bible that has the missing books of Enoch and Bell and the dragon? You realize Bell was the, the, the chief god of, of Babylon and dragon? There is no apocrypha. There's no extra books. There's no writing that, uh, what was that, Jabez or whatever. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. They See, 41, they still didn't understand. How did Jesus relieve their, 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 their understanding? Did he show them a movie? Did he have a carnival? Did he have a vacation Bible? No, he had scriptures. 
and said unto him, This is, this it is written. And thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, the death and burial again. He's not going any further with these men until they understand the death, burial, resurrection. You don't jump. You don't jump to Revelation. You don't jump to Daniel and the times of the tribulation period. Here, mom. Here's a video about the tribulation. You're trying to witness to herself. No. Here, mom. Here's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You keep sending me stuff about the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. You keep preaching about Jesus' and resurrection. You keep coding John 3.16. When are you going to move on? When you got the death, burial, and resurrection stated. When you got that, then we'll move on. Until you get, until you keep not believing the death, burial, and resurrection, I'm going to preach the death, burial, and resurrection. And I'll keep preaching that until you believe it. We're not going no further. We're going to do no numbers. We're going to do no charts. We're going to do no months, no days, no passages of other books of the Bible. We're going to get down your soul, first of all, the death, burial, resurrection. They won't get saved because you, un you told them about pain and suffering with Job. They won't get saved. If your church is studying Genesis, if your church is studying the book of Acts, if it's studying Galatians, if it's studying the love of God, the fools of the Bible, if it's studying King David, and you invite your unsaved friend to church, and they don't hear the gospel, they're not going to get saved. The gospel of Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the foundation of salvation. And if that was not in your life when you got saved, you need to get back to Calvary because this is Calvary. Many people just say this prayer and they don't even speak about Calvary. They don't speak about the empty tomb. We'll speak about the cross, uh, you know, Good Friday. That's not what the that's not the testimony of the of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He didn't die on Friday. And we bring up the Easter bunnies on Sunday and resurrect. That's not the, where is that in the scriptures? Where is the Easter bunny? Where are egg hunts in the scriptures according to death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? It's not there. And somebody got saved because of Easter bunnies and Good Friday. You better check their salvation because that's not according to the scriptures. Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer. You better have a suffering Messiah. Isaiah 53. He suffered because of me. And to rise from the dead the third day. That repentance. Uh-oh. You better have a salvation of the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you better have Repent it. If, if it ain't any of those things, you're not saved. You just said a prayer. Just saying a prayer without repentance, without the gospel, it's not salvation. How else were you saved? Yeah, I didn't want to go to hell. Plain and simple. That was, that was the whole reason for me to get saved. I didn't want to go to hell. But the man that led me with the Bible told me about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Why Christ died. Did you know why Christ died when you were witness to? Do you know the reason? And did you repent of your sins? It's very important. Because Christ is lying out to the very first 11 evangelists that are going to go out with the testimony of Jesus Christ. And he's going to make sure they have the principle. I'm going to say it again. The death, burial, and resurrection, and repentance. 
There'll be plenty of people at the great white throne judgment cast off in the lake of fire and say, Lord, didn't I? I never knew you. Lord, I said this. I never knew you. Lord, I did this. I never knew you. And I'm not going to have those, those saints with their bloods on my hands because I lied to you. That repentance and remission of sin should be preached, should be, re what are you supposed to preach? Repentance and remissions of sin should be preached. You mean God, Jesus Christ, told me what to preach? Go eat all the world. This is the last chapter of Luke, the last chapter of Mark 16, scripture with scriptures. I'm going all the world to preach the gospel. I'm supposed to preach love. No, I'm supposed to preach repentance and remissions of sin and the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's why I think a lot of these vacation Bibles and all these other programs don't work. One of the two, if not the three, are all missing. When you explained Billy and his boat, buying his boat back, I hope you spoke about repentance. I hope you spoke about the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Or Billy just got his boat in the end. So what? Good. You got his boat back. What about his soul? Oh, I got the wordless book. Really? Where did Jesus come up with the wordless book? In his name. In his name. In his name. Acts says, there is no name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. Salvation's in a name. Salvation's in an event. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The salvation is repenting remission in a name. Paul said there are other Jesuses out there. You better be careful. There's another spirit out there. You better be careful. There's another gospel out there. Be very careful. Wait a minute. Another spirit, another Jesus, another gospel. Satan is so slick that there's one way of salvation. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And yet Satan has three ways for a man to be damned. You could believe in the wrong name, the wrong Jesus. You could believe in the wrong gospel. Good Friday, no fish on Friday, jelly beans and Easter eggs are a perfect false gospel. I'm getting these videos out because I want I want you to know the truth. I I want you to look into your heart and say, did I really get saved by what the Bible way? Ye are witnesses of these things. Eleven men, thirteen men so far, seventeen at least, concluding with the women. Are witnesses to what happened you could bring these people up before a court before a judge and say you swear to tell the whole truth nothing but the truth don't say that in court I'm gonna say by the Bible we'll tell the truth nothing but the truth we saw him whip we saw him die on that cross we saw them put him in the tomb and we saw that the angels said that there is no body there's Jesus he's risen we were walking on a highway one day we we're going to a village we sat down with me we have been shown the scriptures that that was Jesus Christ we were in the upper room 11 of us we were proclaimed by Jesus who was alive and sure and well we tell the whole truth nothing but the truth and the court would have to say you are all witnesses to the truth Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Luke will pick up right, right at Acts 1. We're going to do the Gospel of John next. But all the Gospels end and Acts picks up. Luke is the writer of Acts. When we cl close with Luke 24, 53, the proper way would go to Acts 1, 1 and finish the story of Luke 24. 
And he led them out as far as to Bethany. That's a favorite place of his. And he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Those hands that have the scars. You know Peter wept. The love that he had for Jesus and seeing those marks. That's probably one of the things that John didn't write about. And it came past while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried into heaven. And this takes off in Acts 1, 9. From here you go to Acts 1, 9 and you read the rest of the story. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Now there's belief. And were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. Man, they went back to the Jews and they couldn't shut up. You know what you're supposed to do after you get saved? You know what these, you know what these 11 men did? They went back to their hometown and they spoke Jesus is alive. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with a confession, salvation, with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. If somebody gets saved and does not confess Jesus Christ instantly to someone, somewhere, according to James, we, we can doubt. That's the Bible formula. That's the Bible way. You can't help. Now, maybe five, ten years down the road, a year down the road, you know, you just shut up. You don't speak anymore. Okay, fine. As soon as you get saved, your mouth is proclaimed. It's what they did. And you'll see that in the book of Acts. You'll see people get saved and they can't shut up. They go out and witness. Witness. 